Welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. My name is Danny Rocks. Today we will continue to explore time calculations. In our prior lesson we focused on how Excel deals with dates, date functions and date calculations. Today we'll concentrate on time calculations. You recall from the last lesson that when we enter a date in this case we use the today function. Excel returns today's date but it stores a serial number in the cell. To reveal the serial number we'll use the keyboard shortcut control shift tilde. So our keyboard shortcut reveals a serial date of 39,693. Excel starts counting time on January 1st, 1900. So this serial date for today is the amount of time that has elapsed since January 1st, 1900. For time calculations, Excel begins counting time at 12 midnight. So 12 midnight is serial number zero. Let's illustrate using the now function. And now, just like the today function does not require arguments, merely the left and right parentheses. So now we have today's date as well as the current time to reveal the serial number, control shift tilde. So after the period, we see we have 54307, or 54% of the day has elapsed since midnight as of now. To understand time calculations, the key is to remember to enter the information for the time using the correct syntax. To format, formatting the cells makes a great deal of difference in Excel and that Excel captures time as a serial number. So the correct sequence, the correct way to enter a time is with the hour, in this case let's use six, colon. For the minutes, let's use 15, colon. And for the seconds, let's use 37. Now, unless I specify my time, Excel takes the default of AM. So if I want PM or afternoon time, I put in PM. And now when I reveal the serial number using the shortcut control shift tilde, I can see that more than three quarters of the day has elapsed. Specifically, 76% of the day has elapsed as of that time that I entered 6.15 and 37, sec 37 seconds in the afternoon. Okay, let's explore a couple of time functions. We've just seen the now function, and the now function will update automatically whenever I recalculate my worksheet. So when I open up this worksheet tomorrow, now will be the time as of the current date, the current time. If I only want a date stamp, in other words, if I want an entry that just reflects the current time and that it will not update, I use the keyboard shortcut control shift semicolon. And this gives me a date stamp. This will not update. The now function does update. Today we'll be using the time function. The time function returns the serial number of a particular time and it requires three arguments equals time and in the parentheses we supply the hour, the minutes, each one separated by commas and the seconds. Now it's more complicated than that as you will see as we progress our series of lessons. Let's look at some common time calculations. We have a starting time and ending time, and we're interested in seeing how much time has lapsed in between, the difference in time. So a simple calculation equals B2 minus A2 suffices in most cases. In other words, equals the ending time minus the starting time. And regardless of the format, that formula will work. Where we run into trouble when we try to use that calculation is here when we have time that spans midnight. Excel almost always reads our mind or it seems to be reading our mind but in this case it's confusing what we had intended or we're not being clear I should say in what we intend. In this case our starting time is in the afternoon 312 in the afternoon and our ending time is in the morning. So we really meant for Excel to do a calculation that would span midnight but Excel is looking at our ending time and saying whoa whoa Whoa, whoa, hold on a second. My ending time is actually earlier than my start time. 
So the correct way to enter this calculation is to use the if function. I've copied the if function down here. The if function requires a logical test. The logical test is saying if B6, in other words, my ending time, if my ending time is earlier than or less than my start time, then my value of true is that if I have an ending time that is earlier than my start time, I need to add a day. So I'm adding one to the value that's in my end time cell. The value if false is the uh, entry that is already in my ending time. So I include that in parentheses and then that result I then subtract my starting time. So using the if function is the correct way to enter calculations that calculate the difference in time. What about incrementing time? Well, we're familiar with our autofill. And when we autofill, we increment time by filling a series, but that series is limited to one hour. What if I'm interested in seeing increments by 15 minutes? Then I use the time function as I do right in this cell. I'm saying go to my starting time and then use the time function to increment by 0 hours, 15 minutes, and 0 seconds. So now if I change my starting time, let's say to 7.10, I can see how my time has incremented by 15 minutes. Let's do an increment by 1 hour and 30 minutes, or 90 minutes. So equals make reference to my starting time, plus then use the time function and the three arguments are the hours, one hour, comma, 30 minutes for a 90 minute inter interval or an increment, and zero seconds, right parentheses, and then drag this across. And if I change my time to, let's say, 8.15, you can see how every time has incremented there. Okay, so now let's explore one last function over here. Remember formatting. Formatting matters. In this case, I'm calculating the hours that I have worked. Now, even I can see that 8 plus 8 plus 8 is 24, and that's greater than 21. So the incorrect result, it should have been 45. Why is it incorrect? Because of an incorrect format. Let's look at the format for this cell. The format for this cell is showing that I use the H for hour colon mm for minutes. That's incorrect. When I want to have time that calculates over 24 hours, the correct formatting to use for the cell that has the calculation is left bracket h right bracket colon mm. So a small difference in the formatting made a major difference in the calculation. So there you have an introduction to time calculations. We'll see you in the next Tips and Time Savers.